Welcome to Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. Hello and welcome to Ascension Integration. I'm Sandra Walter. During my two weeks off from the radio show, a lot went down. It seemed to be a very well-timed uh, little vacation for me. Uh, away from the show, not away from the blog or work or anything like that, but just wanted to kind of step back, just guided to, hey, just uh, there's going to be some things going on. Let's just take a breather here and kind of observe what's going on in the collective um, so that my guidance uh, stays on track. So during these two weeks, in the first two weeks of August, uh, a lot went down. First of all, a, a Pleiadian channeler caused a ripple in the Awakened Collective with a promise of a a showy landing on television during the Olympics. This is UFO, ET ship landing during the Olympics. Of course, it didn't happen, and I wrote about why it wouldn't uh, prior to the Olympics, and you can read about that on my website. But the main effect was that it sorted out those operating in discernment and neutrality and revealed on a very personal level where folks are putting their focus. Now, I'm well po past the point of getting on any bad wagons that have nothing to do with me. The next steps in this journey, regardless of landing, are about fine-tuning the discernment and neutrality levels. That includes clearing any emotions of fear, meditating for peace, activating the heart center, activating our internal portals, and making ourselves fully available to our higher levels. If the ETs land, then so be it. What can I do to help? If the ETs are an attempt to deceive, then so be it. How can I minimize damage? If the ETs don't land and my service begins to include liaison work, then so be it. Let me know what's needed. After so much engagement with this end game scenario, it's always a question of service for me. How can I help? What are folks going to need to get them through this inevitable transition to unity? Ascension guidance has, has not been popular <laughs> nor lucrative in this uh, culture of judgment, even among light workers, which is, was irritating a few weeks ago, and I'm, I've completely cleared that. I'm like, all right, whatever. Uh, and it, it doesn't matter one bit, even if it takes years for folks to learn to love themselves, each other, and unify, I'm still going to help as best as I can. And I thank Source every day, all the time, that I learned the freedom of unity consciousness. I'm so in love with all of our expressions in this amazing metaphor of life on a planet. Just bring on the, the challenges of the glory. I, like, I know I am. I know who I am. And I know that I am that presence incarnate. So this, uh, so this Pleiadian channel, you know, ideally the Olympic landing would have been exposed as fast as the, the Colorado shooter or all of these other little false flag attempts to uh, manipulate the population and keep people in fear. Preferably, this would have been revealed before the event, but we seem to have a very fast circulation of exposure when false flags occur now. But Many are still addicted to trusting off-world channels and information over their own intuition or discernment or even attempting to learn that, uh, which is something that I attempt to teach through my writing and the show and my, my sessions, my webinars. Now, I urged a few friends to listen to my radio show on First Contact before the Olympics so that they could feel the difference in the energy signature of the messages. The energy signature was very different between what the what the, the channels were, were talking about, the vibration there, and the vibration that I felt when I had my own contact experience. Felt very different. My senses were picking up a completely different vibration from the prediction <clears throat> and those latching onto it as salvation. And and, and my own personal intuition and experience. As always, those who are guided to listen did, and those who were kind of caught up in that flurry of 
duality and excitement and anxiety surrounding that prediction um, didn't. And all is well and all is as it should be for each person's path. Now, even though the quieter and more specific contact has been going on all summer, the broader lessons of self-empowerment, discernment, and collective action were presented to many because of that channel, so purposeful no matter what. Examination and integration of those lessons remains one of the key factors in a global awakening. Meanwhile, we seem to be splintering into more and more acute ascension timelines, and this brings me to the Lion's Gate of August 8th. Now, the 8-8, the, the Lion's Gate, occurs every year, and 2012's amplifications made it a wild week for many. Um, I encountered, <laughs> on a personal level, I encountered more charlatans <laughs> masking as, as ascension counselors than, than I, that I ever have, and in a very direct way. And uh, that, again, you know, I'm just I'm, I'm speaking my own truth and I'm just following my own path here. But when I see um, that kind of stuff still going on, I'm like, what? What, what are you thinking? What, what is going on here? But, uh, but, but this splintering of, of what guidance people are following and, and what they want to, uh, to experience is, is getting very acute. And even uh, during that whole being exposed to a, a couple more of those folks, um, and then George Stankoff came up with yet another date when he and the Pat, which is the planetary ascension team, his basically his blog tribe, uh, he gave another yet another date that when they were going to ascend to the fifth dimension, um, that date has passed, by the way. But there was this energy, this energetic about ascension and like a division of, of ascension paths where it's, it's kind of hard to describe because um, if you're not kind of in, in that role of, of service, of guidance, um, it's, kind of, it's kind of difficult to have that perspective. And I realize that as I'm, as I'm saying this right now. But um, if you're, is it whatever profession you're in, if you see a consistent stream of people who just don't, um, don't provide a very good service and are, are um, <laughs> constantly uh, having, having, getting customers because the, they, they've just kind of pulled wool right over the customer's eyes and you're like, what? And I'm over here doing this work that involves no wool whatsoever. <laughs> it's just, it's just kind of annoying. So I had to go ahead and clear that while I was up on the mountain last week because it was, um, it was starting to get to me. And I was like, wait a minute, I, I'm not even sure if my path includes ascension guidance for much longer. I, I really have felt a, a huge drop off in, um, in support for, for, for this kind of work. So I'm like, okay, is humanity just going to be on a completely different path um, you know, then, then what I'm going to be experiencing or what's going on here. So I'm, I'm doing my best until told otherwise, but I just feel like, like something is, is splintering in, uh, in, even among the people who think they're on an, an ascension timeline or want to be, and just don't know how to do that yet. I don't know. But, um, but between the, uh, the, the other service people, and a lot of people leading um, sites that have to do with, you know, we are going to all leave this poison planet and all this stuff. Um, I'm just not into it, you know, and you are welcome to explore that as much as possible. But um, I think at, at this point in the game, people need to stop. <laughs> it's just my personal opinion. Please stop with the dates, the predictions, the yes, it's going to happen, and then extend the date a little longer, a little longer, and then try to figure out and backpedal what the heck happened um, or why it didn't happen. And the idea of, um, of going through a full-blown ascension process without the highest interests of, of everyone uh, in mind and heart and without the work, without actually 
grounding any kind of, of forward momentum when it comes to improving what is what is going on right here right now uh, I, I don't resonate with that to use uh, the, the new paradigm term I don't resonate with that at all um, I think at, at this point it has to be um, both it has to be very grounded in affecting this this reality assisting in this reality while maintaining while achieving a fifth dimensional consciousness and i think you know what i will get into that next week because i don't want to stray too far from <clears throat> from today's topic but uh but during the Lionsgate week i watched relationships just fall apart all around me long term short term it didn't matter breakups occurred everywhere i spent the week on the mountain because my bed in my rented room here in Mount Shasta was reclaimed by its original owner, did not know that it was actually owned by someone else. And I did not need more than one hint uh, to realize the message of don't sleep here right now. <laughs> so I was like, okay, going camping. Um, and sure enough, the, the couple that I stay with here uh, broke up. They had an emotional week of moving, separating years of belongings and all the typical drama associated with Cruel behavior out of fear of change, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, I had no clients scheduled at all, which is the lifeblood of keeping this show and my work going. So I was strongly pushed to just let it all go during the two weeks that I was away from the radio show uh, that I had created for myself. On the night of the Lionsgate, the 8-8, I had one of the strongest, most vivid and powerful exchanges with Masters of Light I have ever encountered. And I cannot emphasize that enough, how, how unbelievable this was. Now, most of us have had visions and sensations of uh, light or energy work being done to us. And I'm not talking about, you know, you close your eyes and wow, all kinds of light. Um, this was, was much different. This particular activation lasted all night long. And it was constant beams and bolts of intensely bright light working me from, from head to toe, beings and, and orbs manifesting, walking right through the walls of, of my tent, one after the other with light gifts, adjustments and accelerations and colors and harmonics, the tones and frequencies of light were so brilliant, eyes open or eyes closed, that at one point I wondered um, how much my body can handle. I was like, oh, what is going on? I'm like, am I going to survive this? Um, because it wasn't, um, they were they were not uh, masters that were identifying themselves in any kind of individual way it wasn't like i am serapis bay and shazam it was it was it was just constant and it, it there was like a line or something like okay time to work on sandra and it was uh it was pretty incredible and and felt very strange because in the middle of of this night i actually had someone like walking around outside of my tent, which really disoriented me because, you know, it's it's typically pitch black on the mountain. Um, and I'm experiencing like all this light and I feel like my whole tent is flashing or something. And then like I hear footsteps like in 3D, 4D. I'm like, oh, wait, there's someone outside. I like had to, you know, find my flashlight and make sure that, uh, that there was no interference going on. Um, but it was like as soon as as soon as that left, and, and I literally beam them, I, I don't know what this new skill is, but literally beam them out of my presence, just like sent this, this huge flash of light through my entire campsite and, and, and they were gone, just, it just blew them right out of the, right out of the place. Um, but I was kind of wondering, and, and it's, as soon as the, the footsteps stopped and, and they went away, I, I just laid back down and, and immediately it was like this blue lightning flash started and it wasn't all blue, it was blue gold, crystalline, you know, all colors, magenta, a white, pure diamond light, uh, a lot of different things going on. Um, 
and and I do not have clarity on exactly what that was about, but I will share my intention for the Lion's Gate in a second. So I was completely exhausted the next day, and I sensed that that my my pure intention for the Lion's Gate may have been activated. And my intention, which has been my intention for a while, um, but I, I really clarified it because I know that the Lion's Gate is a, is a way to, to really filter out all interference from, from creating a really pure timeline for yourself. And, and the timeline thing, again, it's just creating the reality that you want to experience. And I think that all these things that were happening in the, in the first couple of weeks of August are pointing to that, but let me share my intention. So my intention is to be a, a pure conduit of source, pure consciousness, serving Gaia and humanity from the highest frequency possible in whatever my highest expression of service is. Probably not ascension counseling, just saying, but what whatever that highest expression is that is unfolding and has been unfolding during this whole live stream um i i i want i want it <laughs> i want to have at it fully embodying the crystalline consciousness and merging completely with my higher fifth six dimensional expressions in order to assist in the strongest way possible now that's been my intention but I kind of took it a step further with the lion's gate and I think because I I finally said you know what all all of this all this other stuff doesn't matter you know what what is the the pure service that I am meant to deliver on the planet right here right now and I would also like this <laughs> I would also like to merge completely with that higher consciousness so that I am as strong as possible and can experience that state of consciousness that is complete freedom. Now, over the summer, we've been merging with our higher self. And I, I think those of us who have, who have started to embody that crystalline consciousness are able to take the next step. I do sense that the... Uh, the accelerations that occurred during August um, are are very purposeful. I feel that there's a, a little bit of external chaos coming down the line, which is why I was guided to uh, kind of take a look at the collective. So when I tapped in and took a look at the collective awakened crowd after this amazing experience and then I see like all these breakups happening you know my friends are, are are breaking up and people I know are breaking up and people are just getting doors slammed in their face everywhere and things are like shutting down all of a sudden I'm like whoa no clients no support okay uh let's take a look at the collective and see what's going on and when I tapped in and took a look at the awakened crowd I'm not talking about everybody on the planet I don't you know I, I kind of don't care what the dark folks are up to anymore. I don't care. They can do whatever they want. They have their own timeline. But when it comes to the awakened crowd, I saw these shifts occurring to fine tune people's journeys in alignment with their desires. And of course, that is the purpose of, of the lion's gate every year. But here we've got this weird energetic going on that's just getting us so and so close to um, it, you know this time collapse and the astral collapse where the, the 4D realm is just shrinking and 5D is right there. As we work closely with that zero point field, that vast multi-dimensional playground of creations, timelines, parallel realities and manifestation, the illusionary gap between intention and outcome disappears. Now, the beautiful part of this acceleration is the realization of what stays and what goes. And just to just to kind of go, let's just go with a metaphor for a moment, because metaphor is the language of light. It's the language of the universe. So when it comes to your own, if your journey is a garden, when your plants bloom the moment a seed is placed in the soil, you are much more discretionary about what goes in your garden. 
some tendrils choke out what you wanted to grow. And some intentions don't manifest because they're abandoned in some shady corner while you're focusing on, wow, look at how those tendrils are, tendrils are choking out everything else. And I'm, I'm sure you will all understand that metaphor. So I, I see a lot of pruning going on consciously and subconsciously. And, and I also see a lot of people just kind of holding on to the pruning shears, staring at the invasive overgrowth that they have created and not knowing where to cut first. Somewhere in that garden is the true self, the unconditional love that we keep talking about, the garden of the heart blooming infinitely regardless of external factors. And when it comes to a time collapse and this astral collapse that we're experiencing, we are able to grow whatever we want. And if you'll just tie this into the whole idea of all these uh, predictions and off-world advice consistently saying, what's, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Uh, you know, going to the psychics, tell me what's going to happen in my path and everything. When, when we start seeing the parallel between what what's in your garden everybody else's stuff is it your stuff is it outside influence is it fear porn is it endless hours on youtube and you can't even like you don't even know what's growing in the in the back of your garden you know your that garden of the heart blooming infinitely can't even get out because it's it's in the shady area clarity about who you are and what you desire allows you to become the fertile soil, the blooms, the magnificent and unique creation, expanding and expressing freely as the facet of all that is, which is you, the true self. We are not all on the same path. I've said this over and over again. It doesn't make sense to create two of the identical anything it, it, that does not happen. You might look alike, you might sound alike, you might speak the same language, but internally you are having very different journeys. And that diversity in our gardens was taken away for a long time. And as it begins to return, as we start realizing what who's been in my garden <laughs> who has been growing all this stuff that i don't even like this has nothing to do with me and as we start pulling out the stuff that doesn't fit and tending to the stuff that we do want and approaching this this time where there our experience of time is already very very different but our experience of time becomes so uh, expansive that we realize, wow, the, the, the time lapse that I've been experiencing between what I think and what happens around me is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Eventually, we will be able to instantly manifest exactly what we want in our garden. And I feel like we are really getting extremely close to that. However, this is not about waiting around for that to occur. It's a very personal journey. This is your garden. What do you want to do with it? You know, you can have the master landscaper come in and cut it to, to, to a design plan. But, uh, honey, we're in a very multidimensional, parallel reality, crazy amount of timelines happening all at once reality. Uh, the plan is probably not going to hold for a while. Either that or you're going to decide on, this is what I want my garden to look like. And when you have absolutely a laser-like focus on this, this is all I want it to be, um, there will be nothing else. So it's also allowing room for, for growth. You know, this is, this is what I'm going to plant at the core. And then as it expands, I'm going to leave that that same void that I talked about when I described how source creates a universe 
taking a piece of the consciousness and creating a void around it where everything can be created around that intention is the same thing we're doing with this own personal garden metaphor that I'm explaining right now is we're taking what do we want at the core that's our pure intention and then allowing for interaction with the highest levels of pure light intelligence love and wisdom that we can pull in there so it's not just about complete isolation and walling up your garden if we want to affect the collective consciousness because it has a lot to do with our journey even though we can be in control of our journey as much as we like but the external is still going to be moving around us whether they see us don't see us some people do resonation etc it we're, we're still experiencing Gaia whether we're experiencing 3d 4d 5d 12d doesn't matter you're still in a body on a planet right now and the the idea of of leaving the planet in order to escape that experience is um is foolish in in my opinion so this is why and i, I want to define you know maybe i should just take a moment here to define ascension so ascension is an evolutionary process which integrates a higher frequency of vibration into the physical body, activating the true divine human, which is the crystalline Christ crystal state of consciousness, and merging the higher 5D, 6D, and lower 3D, 4D expressions of the self. Ascension is not about leaving the planet, getting rescued by off-world brethren, or flying up into heaven. It's not about watching the shift unfold online, or waiting for the external world to provide evidence of inner change. Never going to happen. Ascension is a conscious choice to engage in evolution. And when consciously activated, the ascension process affects every aspect, level, and layer of a person's beingness. The physical, emotional, mental, egoic, spiritual structures undergo acute transformation, and they evolve to meet the demands of a higher level of consciousness. And, and the awakening phenomenon, which, uh, which I've, I've written a, a very short ebook, which you can get for free on my site, called What is Happening to My Friend?, uh, which is all about what the awakening phenomenon is. Uh, the awakening phenomenon is one of the more impressive effects of the shift, in my opinion. Amidst the external changes, political, social, financial, spiritual, solar, planetary, bound to happen, <laughs> don't wait around for it, go ahead and create whatever you want, people encounter profound internal change due to the ascending frequencies, which are inevitable. It is merely our position in the galaxy and cosmic timing which is causing this evolutionary jump time. That gap in the fossil records is happening right now. So it's, it is upon us and it appears that the entire planet and humanity is being transformed and cleansed of lower vibrations how fast that occurs and how painful it will be uh, depends on the collective consciousness and right now the weight is on the shoulders of the awakened ones who want to do something about uh, easing and accelerating the the global shift um, so so if you are awake and and consciously ascending and that that means your this heightened awareness returns your wisdom, knowledge, and a connection to divine aspects of yourself, which have been dormant for thousands of years. And as you begin to wake up, and that's merely dormant, asleep DNA, asleep structures, waking up, that's why they call it the awakening, dormant stuff that has been snoozing for a long time, some people still hitting the snooze button, uh, begin to come online 
all of a sudden you start feeling different things, you're much more sensitive, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go through the awakening phenomenon right now. But the, the level of discernment and neutrality that needs to be unwavering through these last few months of 2012 and beyond as we go through the shift um, is it's it's vital to your experience now I understand that there are a lot of people who are like how do I get out how do I ascend me 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 just worried about the self and that's fine if you want your journey to be all about yourself okay I understand some people are just not connected to the planet at all at this point just like can't wait to get out of here and and think that it's just like poison beyond belief and oh we've got to get out of here and show people the way out that's fine if that's part of your journey um my uh, my guidance the show all my work is based around getting to know the self, achieving self-love, achieving self-empowerment, getting into that state of crystalline discernment and neutrality in order to assist Gaia and humanity through the shift. My guidance is not about leaving the planet. If you really want to get out, it, that call will be answered by someone. I say that a lot, but trust me, it will be. We don't know exactly how this is going to unfold and it's become very, very clear to many way showers that the idea of predicting and pulling in uh, you know, different channels and different information and everything and then when these dates passed going, oh, well, it was because, uh, yes, it's still going to happen, still going to happen, of course. We have to understand that as our as our concept of time changes drastically, and as the, the mere fabric of time space becomes very diff- a very different experience on this planet, those predictions and dates and timelines and everything are so diverse and, and so multidimensional that Again, I think it's foolish for people to emphasize uh, this is definitely going to happen now, definitely going to happen. There is no definite anything. The only thing that's definite is what you do with your own journey, your own self. And that's why I encourage everybody to get as clear as possible on who they are and what they want to do and take action on it rather than waiting for for dates because it, people who are going to wait until what august 23rd big okay we're, now we're we're going back into virgo and there's going to be this huge thing and as a virgo i'm like yay okay cool you know my birthday's coming up i'm like oh that'd be quite a party if you know we have like this big experience i'm not counting on it <laughs> you know i just for for my own personal journey i will use little markers like an acceleration or a lion's gate or my own uh, birthday or or different astrological alignments to accelerate or amplify um, some some pure intentions Uh, but my intention is never let's mix everything up and make everything as chaotic as possible everybody needs to wake up Um, it is very clear that even the awakened community at this point, it does not want that. They like to wa- watch it and read about it and panic and feel that that flush of, of anxiety um, that comes to that that because of that that sense of um, of uh, urgency and everything, and then they're they're just kind of spilling that energy into into the internet, which is kind of our our collective consciousness in a way uh, right now, it's really not doing a whole heck of a lot. I mean, this really has to be kind of a boots on the ground kind of operation and not from a panicky Pete point of view and not from a higher than thou point of view either and certainly not from a, a survivalist 
uh, my way or or the highway or a um a, a let's get out of here as fast as we can point of view i really don't see that and that's not what i teach and and i receive a lot of flack uh for you using the term ascension at all even among high end way showers <laughs> just just very polarized about the term ascension. And I'm like, well, okay, you're the one saying that you don't experience polarity anymore, and, and yet you say ascension, and they're like, oh, it's not ascension. So that's why I wanted to define what what my version of ascension is. You certainly don't have to follow that, but that is what my work is focused on. So if there's any doubt about um, th- what's going on here on the show or on my website or with my work, um, that is it. And I've written it down. It's on my site. So go ahead and, and read it over again if you like um, for those who still read. So because of this sense of stasis this month, a lot of light workers or awakened ones kind of saying, hey, what's going on? That didn't happen. This didn't happen. Feeling kind of a, a what's going on? I'm not finding anything that resonates anymore. This is <laughs> this is that the, the disenchantment with the external, the how come nothing is happening or why is it so quiet scenario. Let me just say that that is very intentional this month. Very intentional. It is showing you that the prediction porn you're losing interest in, that or that tell me what's going to happen to me construct, is leaving your reality, or at least uh, it should be. <laughs> I don't want to use the shoulds, but what are you doing? That that whole construct is starting to be broken apart. So when a, a, a big challenge like landing during the Olympics and how many people watch the Olympics like every night waiting for, for you know, searching for something to, to occur, um, what, what, a, what a huge waste of life stream that that was in my opinion i'm just like what what are you doing you wasted the these two brilliant energetic weeks of august anyway um but that whole tell me what's going to happen to me construct not tell me what's going to happen to the financial system the government the this that and the other thing tell me what somebody out there is doing about it construct is This is why you're experiencing that, hmm, kind of doesn't fit anymore. I'm hoping that a lot of you feel that way. Um, Pay attention to that feeling and honor it. It is very intentional. I'm not going to say anything more about that because at this point, everyone should be able to go, okay, what does it mean for me? And when you kind of tap into the collective consciousness and feel that stuff that's going on you're like oh that's why okay okay and I'm you know I'm not talking about being some super energy master guru who can you know call upon the wind or or the fire or whatever Um, that's fine if you want to play with that that is available of course but when it comes to your own personal journey what is applicable to what your pure intention is and if you don't know what your pure intention is, it's probably because you've hit that that glass ceiling. Sorry, girls, use, using a term that used to be used on us. <laughs> but that glass ceiling in the ascension process where you're kind of ruled by the emotional levels. And that emotional deity, entity, construct is not you. Never has been. Just a... a along with the ego and the mind, just a way of dealing with density that got manipulated quite a bit. But, you know, we allowed it, blah, blah, blah. We, we all know the story by now. Being ruled by the emotional levels prevents DNA activation, crystalline activation, and ascension. It is a glass ceiling on the process. And when I saw that a lot of people were like, hey, why did I uh, A fall for that prediction, B, get so involved, C, wanted it so badly, or hated it so bad. Like, why? what's with all the duality? 
or even when it comes to this these breakups and these things that happened during the lion's gate when doors are getting slammed and things aren't happening and you're like ah i just how come i can't do anything and and you haven't gotten to the point where you're like oh not supposed to do anything supposed to go within and go all right what is going on exactly in my journey that emotional block is something that um that i've been i've been teaching emotional clearing for a while but and this is the last this is the last time i'm going to do it because it's kind of like once and for all can we just get out of that space get away from those constructs so i'm i'm doing a, a webinar it's going to be two hours long and we're going to go through how to do this i'm not talking about uh you know burning nasty letters imaginary nasty letters to your dad or you know tearing up letters to the boyfriend or asking your guides to handle it for you this is not a mental exercise it is the nitty-gritty work that we all must do to raise our consciousness now i did this a few years ago and it's ongoing trust me you've got to get the core stuff the family monad the main relationships the main lessons exposed and learned otherwise literally no progress just nothing nothing you keep coming back you keep coming back it's a cycle and your your life stream will keep throwing that back at you because you're here for a reason to learn certain things so you need to uncover the soul contracts and the recurring emotional blocks and train your clearing muscles to clear the baggage for good and that is how you achieve that fifth dimensional state of consciousness which is available and we want it long term right we all want to embody that frequency because that is the freedom and you get peaks of it and then the the external world will step in with like hey i'm going to take your bed away and <laughs> or whatever uh and, and things are going to get crazy for a little while it you can be dominated by that by the emotional construct and the manipulation of that emotional field around you that is not you but is being constantly manipulated by frequencies and media and online stuff as well as as very subtle manipulative programs which we are still in agreement to be to be running on the planet and i want everyone to realize that your emotional clearing is going to take you out of that space where it is it's okay for that to keep going on well i'm not really going to do anything about it so you're agreeing to that being a uh, status quo and so it goes on and on and on you can get as outraged as you like on facebook or on twitter uh with or your online social media of choice or your discussions with your friends you can get as outraged as you like uh about the external structure but it ain't going to change a thing until you clear your emotional hoo-ha and get yourself clear enough into discernment and neutrality where you can actually be effective at where you focus your consciousness. So I'm going to provide the the why is how and specifics on processing those deep rooted beliefs, fears, constructs which limit the ascension experience. Uh, I'll get into the technical aspects of DNA activation and the lower level entities, deities, constructs of emotion. And then I'm going to move into the clearing process and we'll work through those hard questions right on paper light grounded and and right during the event and and you'll be able to listen to the recording just like the last one as often as you like but i'm going to be offering specific examples so that people really get it people can really transmute those lower energies up and out for good no matter what level of awakening you have achieved your repressed emotions subconscious create that glass ceiling on the ascension process and there are certain lessons that we pre-agreed to attempt to learn attempt to learn in this lifetime not going to happen automatically and if we can realize the lessons and integrate them we can increase our vibratory levels and raise our consciousness to a higher frequency that allows for dna activation and restoration of our true nature if we resist or avoid the clearing process we get more oh the same circumstances relationships and challenges until the lesson is identified, learned, and then energetically transmuted. 
and you're welcome to to join me on that webinar just go to uh, my website it's going to be on saturday uh, august 25th but that I, I just saw a need to to go over that one last time because i i feel like a lot of folks are, are hitting that ceiling they're just like I don't get it. What's happening with my process? Where am I going? What's going on? Instead of experiencing the the immense amount of multidimensionality that is available right now and the immense expansion of consciousness and not just the the heart center but but your whole, every particle of your being uh being transformed into something else. And let's not decide, well, it's definitely this, and I can feel my wings growing, and blah, blah, blah. You, just you, what do you want? If you want to leave the planet, that's pretty easy. If you want to ascend your consciousness, take advantage of this evolution and go through it as smoothly as possible so that you can not only help yourself and your friends, but the collective to get moving on what needs to be done. If you're ready to take action or really frustrated that action has not been taken uh, in in many areas of um, of our social structures, then this is this is something that must be done because you will not be effective fighting war with war. It doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You have to get clear and understand what clear is. Clear is not someone else putting stones on your chakras and playing a singing bowl and now you're clear. That is a very temporary state of, ah, I felt pretty good. That is not emotional clearing. And it is not about asking anyone else to do it for you. But we do need guidance to understand what needs to be done how to reveal those lessons and and some concrete steps you know some um, a map i have a friend who's in town right now who has had incredible experiences with the elohim and is is on this on this journey and he's he's locked up right now he's just like I don't understand. Everything is bullshit. Like he just looks around in, in Mount Shasta and he's like, this is all bullshit. I can't feel any of it. So he's he's decided that that is his reality. And it wasn't until just a couple of weeks ago, they just like, all right, teach me everything, you know, <laughs> which is which is very sweet because he just he, he's like, I want out. What's going on? I just I'm ceiling, 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 ceiling. And it's not until you can get clear about who you are and what's going on with you that you can be effective, more effective in the collective. Of course, this isn't about processing night and day for years and years and, oh, I've done so much work on myself and everything. There are people who have done a lot of work on themselves and yet ceiling. So what's going on there? So let's let's get through it. Let's get through it because I do sense that the, the fall is going to be uh, a little a little sketchy you know, I can I can just feel it, and that's just and that's not a global, you know, crisis prediction at all. I'm not talking about that. Me personally, my journey, I feel is going to get a little weird <laughs> if if it hasn't been weird already. But but as far as as my work goes, I provide very grounded guidance on the ascension process because I feel that integration is vital to achieving a permanent state of higher consciousness reliance on external modalities channels old paradigm new age methods has really limited the awakening process for quite a few folks and many are now ready to take on the task of self-empowerment reactivate their divine human state and achieve crystalline consciousness if they want to my services are focused on mastery which includes a multitude of areas Commanding the body vehicle, crystalline consciousness activation, emotional clearing, inner portal expansion, multidimensional awareness, becoming a pure service conduit, whatever you would like to accomplish. But in the ascension process, it is essential to clear those lower emotional, egoic, and mental constructs which block higher states of consciousness. And we have an amazing opportunity to understand all of that stuff individual and collective which resulted from incarnating here 
and free your higher self and your current expression to do what it came here to do, awaken and embrace your unique expression of source. This is not a cookie cutter process. It's very personal, it's very it's very private for for a lot of us. It's a very private process. I'm I'm very fortunate that I get to share mine through my writing and, and this radio show and, and my work. That's a choice. And you can choose to do that as well. But please no, no, no more folks with, without skills going, I don't know, I'll just wing it. Uh, we, we need to step away from that and really get clear on what is beneficial to our path, what is not beneficial to our path, and what is none of our friggin' business. Because a lot of this is none of our business. And when we let that stuff in, channeling, saying big things are going to happen, uh, false flag events going, oh my God, that's horrible. When you let that stuff in, when you let that affect your energy fields, your light body, your body vehicle, what are you, what are you doing? Obviously, you're not clear. Clear is about transparency on all levels. It's about sharing what you have and letting the stuff that you don't want to stick go, go right through, you know, be gone and learning how to do that. Now I feel that that's the most powerful thing that we can do right now. If it's if it's about preparation for you, if you feel that December is going to be huge or the equinox is going to be huge or whatever you're you're sensing, it will be huge for you. So if you're going to just kind of sleepwalk through it or go through as a an awakened empowered being, it's your choice. But I think this this first half of August has really exposed that in a lot of journeys. Kind of like, hmm, I seem to be dependent on outside information to know what's going on. And then I see something from a friend and then I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 that's true. So there's this constant uh, agreement going on. And for for folks who, who don't have the most clarity, a lot of that stuff... Um, is very influential on your consciousness, very influential on your path. So let's just, you know, that, that's why I feel like the emotional clearing, again, it, it's the, the last time I'm going to uh, to to offer this. It's the last time I'm, I'm gonna talk about it because um, I'm, I'm gone. <laughs> I'm, I'm way past that. I'm like, okay, uh, let's, let's, you know, step right out of that altogether. But I feel that it's it's important, and, and I feel like a lot of my work right now is just about leaving these key pieces kind of behind. So when I, I no longer counsel the, the newly awakened, it's just too hard. It's just, it's just too difficult for me. But I am creating an, in a very inexpensive Ascension Basics Awakening course that will guide folks through the early stages of awakening. I'll, I'll leave that up and then have these kind of ascension essentials. Uh, wow, that's a good tongue twister. Ascension essentials. Um, things like emotional clearing, where it's just this two hour video, interactive class, all the materials, all the slides and everything, and just puts it out there. So if someone is comes down the pipe and they're sending me an email going, oh my God, I'm freaking out, my husband did it again. I just say, okay, you need to watch that webinar because <laughs> I'm not, I can't spend hours and hours answering emails uh, any longer because I just, I just have to like cut it off because it's, um, I, I can't, you know, I just, I'm not capable of working for free much longer. It looks like I have probably about a month to go. So, so that's it. So I'm going to create this stuff to kind of leave behind and we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, in September, I'm hosting a an advanced course for those who want to take advantage of the spectacular energies and opportunities available for this full embodiment of that crystalline consciousness in the 5D frequencies. And I truly believe that that is what was occurring with me the night of the lion's gate, was that the mere intention, that pure intention of service and understanding that and my conversations with Source lately um, have have brought that have manifested that in my live stream where that activation is 
it, it feels like it's a switch and at any point I just have to go click um, but I'm not going to go click until I'm, I'm done with this this part of the program so we enter this phase of incarnating the higher self over the summer and the energetics now support unlimited access to that fifth dimensional state of consciousness again it's not about leaving you might leave this reality for a little while to be completely transformed um in my my truth of all truth opinion yeah i do feel like there's for for those who are who are ready and have the right intention behind uh fully activating that consciousness i i do feel like you're going to have to be taken out of this reality for a little bit and it might you know on on the 3d calendar it might look like three days or whatever uh i don't know it feels like it shouldn't even be that long but um yeah you might disappear for a little bit um but then c come come back with this this new state of consciousness and then the challenge is walking around in that state of consciousness fully embodied in every particle of your being and then walking amongst the uh the that fourth dimensional um existence that is kind of playing out around us um so yet more challenges you know there's never, <laughs> there's a, there's never an end point i hope nobody's expecting to like you know it's not like uh uh, you know, getting to the, the end of the game of life, I won, you know, <laughs> like, it's not like that at all. Okay, and and I'm sorry to, to disappoint anyone who thought they were like, gonna walk through a gateway, and then I'm done. All right. It's like, Oh, do you have any idea what is waiting for you out there? That multidimensional experience is, uh, it's a whole lot more complex than what we have going on here. Just gonna say that. Um, fascinating and, and beautiful and magnificent and i hope that everyone who wants that will be able to experience it but um it's yeah <laughs> it's uh mo moving on okay more, more work so uh so so that's it for this week's show um i just wanted to kind of kind of touch base with um what was going on with the uh, the awakened community what's been going on the first couple of weeks of August and what that what my my guidance um, shows has been occurring and then going into this next week uh, everybody just kind of if you can step away from the information dynamic and spend more time uh, with your true self and how you would like to express that and the, the, the name of my site is Creative Creative Evolution for a reason. You are creating your own life stream. You always have been, but now that we fully realize that, take responsibility and have fun with it. And fun is not defined by what used to be fun. Fun is now, what can I create? What's the wildest thing that I can do? What is the most expansive thing that I can do? Where am I still hiding if I want all this stuff to be revealed where am i hiding my own self and where can i bust that apart and have that spiritual coming out that ascension coming out whatever you want to call it everywhere in my life to ensure that the speed of the shift moves forward at full throttle from here on in if we want all the manipulation and hiding and all that to end on the planet, you got to start with the self. Go ahead and take those micro movements toward positive action. Go ahead and take those huge leaps in consciousness by stepping away from the influence of so many external uh, forces and frequencies and get clear. Spend as much time in nature as you can and uh if you if you want to i mean come come on down to to mount shasta you know <laughs> whatever whatever you want to do i'm happy to to take you around but um you know whatever you need to do whatever the intuition has been tugging at for a while take some action 
you know, this is, it feels like stasis right now because a lot of us are like, okay, need to detach from trying to help, trying to help, trying to help and get clear on exactly what it is I want to create. And when it comes to pure service, we're not going to get to a point of pure service by uh, playing a, a divine guessing game or, or feeling like you're a goody two-shoes because you're the, the best recycler on the block or whatever. Um, it is about love. It's always about the love. Even when it comes to the behavior in the, the house that I'm renting a, a room in right now, um, could have been very polarized about this and gone, oh, I'm out of here, you know, whatever. But, uh, but said, no, I'm going to handle this from my fifth dimensional state and shine love and positive action, not just sitting in my room, sending them love. That's very nice, but nothing beats action, honey. So, you know, really taking some steps to go, yeah, okay, um, how about some healing? How, how do we do that? How do we show love to every situation that is presenting? And I guarantee you that when you start sharing love, it comes back a thousandfold. How many times have we heard that? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's fine to isolate when you need to, but not all the time. Not all the time. We don't need to shelter ourselves from brother humanity in order to expand our consciousness. It's a balance. Take a few days away. Come back, a few hours there, a few minutes, whatever you have time for, making more time, and and start mixing it up. Start changing things. Because when we start changing things on this level of awareness, this level of consciousness, it amplifies what we're doing in our higher levels of consciousness. It opens doors, it opens those portals, it opens your heart. Let's get there. Really time to move forward. And I know everyone's exhausted because the energies are like, wah, crazy. And more are coming. <laughs> this is not like, oh, how much more can we take? I'm like, oh, sister, you have no idea. So it's, it's, it's evolution. I mean, I can't, you know, I can't describe it any other way. It's happening. There's nothing you can do about it. What you can do about <laughs> you is, is what, and, and the collective consciousness is what we should be focused on right now. So thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate that you like to listen to this radio show. Um, if you would like to go to my website, I've updated my service offering page and described with a lot of clarity what my Ascension guidance is about. And uh, if you would like a private session that is available now, I am back in town and, and ready. And uh, if you would like to join the webinar, please visit uh, my site at sunderwalter.com and uh, sign up for that. It's $33, not a lot, uh, for two hours worth of hardcore work. And you will never be the same if you haven't done this work yet. It is very transformative. And in the meantime, Please have a beautiful and creative week. This has been Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. For more information on Ascension or Ascension Counseling, visit Sandra on the web at www.sandrawalter.com.